You're listening to Q&A on the Talk of the Quad Cities KQ&A. Once again, here's your host, DJ Fong. And we are back live at 321. We have Barbara Leonard and Kate Ingalls from People Who Care, and they have done me the great favor of wearing name tags, so I don't have to keep track of two different names in one show. That's hard for me sometimes. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, Barbara and Kate. Now, tell us, first of all, what is People Who Care? It's a nonprofit organization that's been here in Prescott for 26 years, mm-hmm. and our mission is to help adults who can no longer drive, uh, allowing them to stay in their own homes and neighborhoods mm-hmm. by providing essential transportation uh, and other caring assistance. We take them grocery shopping. If mm-hmm. they have vision problems, we help them with paperwork. Uh, we'll assess their home for safety and make sure they're living in a safe environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, Those kinds of things. And if they just need a friendly visitor because they have no family in town, we'll hook them up one-on-one with somebody that will be their regular visitor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Barbara, tell me about the the age group that you serve, because I assume a lot of listeners will hear this and think, oh, it's all elderly people. But you have some younger people, too, don't you? Yes, that's right. We have some neighbor. We call our the people we serve neighbors, Mm -hmm. and we have neighbors uh, in their later 50s all the way up that uh, aren't able for whatever reason to get to their appointments or sure. take care of certain things in their home so that they can still live independently. And speaking of living independently, we've all learned that we can lose our vision or lose our mobility almost any age, accident, illness, things like this, correct? Yes, that's right. So uh, tell me about uh, how you got involved with people who care, Barbara. Well, I end, uh, attended an orientation to learn about people who care. I'd seen something in the newspaper and was interested in volunteering. I'm fairly new in the community, so I attended one of the orientation sessions, and afterwards I thought that sounds like something I'd really be interested in, so Mm -hmm. I signed up. Kate, how about you? I was actually recruited by one of the neighbors who was receiving assistance from people who care. Nice. When I first moved to town, she lived in my neighborhood and went to the church that I was visiting, and... You know, after a month or two, she said, you know, Kate, when you get those boxes unpacked, you're going to be kind of bored. (laughs) I want to tell you about a really nice group in Prescott, and you might think about working with them. And she told me what they do Mm -hmm. and her perception of that kind of support and the wonderful people that had helped her. And I thought, okay, I'm in. Mm-hmm. So, so the next time I saw the orientation in the paper, I went. Sure. And, uh, Barbara, I'm sure you're going to identify with this. I have a lot of guests on the show uh, who moved here to retire, or so they thought, and now they find themselves even busier than during their working years, but doing what they love. Big difference, isn't it? That's right. And it's really gratifying to be able to reach out and help people who need assistance mm-hmm. and maybe take that time that you didn't have when you were working full time and yeah. busy with family. And, and whatnot, so it's it's really exciting to be able to be even busier than you were maybe when you were working. So tell us why your calendar is circled for June 16th. Ooh, it's our big annual gala fundraiser. We're going to be out at the Prescott Resort, and mm-hmm. we're going to have a fabulous evening. Our theme this year is kind of a Hollywood red carpet lights camera action. We're going to shine a big spotlight on our sponsors uh, Barbara and her sponsorship team have done a an amazing job of mm-hmm. garnering some wonderful new sponsors for us and our our auction donors. It's a very generous community and we've gotten lots of nice uh, items and uh, gift packages donated. So we're going to mm-hmm. shine a light on those people who help us. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have a silent auction and a live auction that will be very lively and very fast. <laughs> and Barbara, do you have some of those sponsors and some of the uh, raffle or some of the uh, uh, the items there? Uh, you mean names of sponsors? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Let's see. This year we have some of our sponsors are the uh, Yavapai Regional Medical Center, Lamb Chevrolet Cadillac, mm-hmm. Thumb Butte Medical Center, McDonald's, uh, APS, the uh, region, uh, Yavapai Regional uh, Indian Tribe, mm-hmm. the James Family Foundation, uh, MI Windows here in Prescott Valley. Uh, let's see. Kindred. Uh, hospice, Fane Contracting, Fane Signature Group. So and, we and, have a great group this year. And what are some of the items being auctioned? Oh, I can tell you about that because I get the pleasure of 
receiving that's all the, those that, videos. That's, a, that's just the fun part of the job. <laughs> that is the fun part. We've got some really fun ones this year. Andrea Bocelli is coming back to Phoenix on Sunday, December 2nd, and we have two seats in the sort of lower bowl seating area, so they'll be on the floor. Good ones at the... Andrea Bocelli? Andrea coming... Bocelli coming here. Playing where? At the, down at the Talking Stick Resort Arena oh, in Phoenix. Oh, okay. I was thinking coming to, to Prescott. No, you'll have to, drive to, say, wow. you'll have to drive to Phoenix. That's why my eyeballs got this big. <laughs> so tickets for two at that concert. That'd be nice. Uh, the Phoenician uh, gave us a nice one-night stay in one of their kind of deluxe rooms and dinner for two at Maori and Cotton, one mm-hmm. of their on-site lovely restaurants. Here's one that the football guys will like, guys and gals. Arizona Cardinals football, Sunday, September 23rd. Mm-hmm. It's third, an afternoon game. One third game of the season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At the University of Phoenix Stadium. Tickets for two and a parking pass. And these are season holder tickets, so they're like on the 20-yard line. Nice. Yeah. And one of the all-time favorites and highly sought after, uh, Barry Barbie at El Gato Azul. Oh, sure. Offers us... Uh, a whole series of dinner for four mm-hmm. once a month in your home or uh, some other venue, a park Barry. or a you know, the zoo or mm-hmm. anything. Uh, so it comes out to be 48 meals in the calendar year. You can divide it any way you want. Mm-hmm. So you could do four people once a month or you could do a big party every three months or whatever. But he, he prepares a special menu and you get complimentary wine from mm-hmm. Lloyd's Liquor. Very nice. Now, anytime someone throws a fundraiser, you know, somebody's going to ask, oh, what are you raising funds for? What kind of costs do you incur to provide the services you provide? Well, we have our paid staff, a small and mighty and talented and amazing paid and staff. And underpaid. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, we have two full-time people and about five part-time people. Mm-hmm. And they man our physical offices. We've got an office here in Prescott. Mm-hmm. Uh, that space is donated by Prescott United Methodist Church, but we have to maintain all of the utilities and sure. the uh, databases and so on that we've invested in to manage our scheduling for patients mm-hmm. or, or for our clients, our neighbors, and our volunteers. Um, we have a physical office in Prescott Valley that we rent, so we have real rent there, mm-hmm. and we have a donated office in Chino Valley, but then all the associated costs of just keeping the thing running. Sure. <laughs> uh, and doing publishing newsletters four times a year, uh, things like that, and putting on this fundraiser, although we we uh, were very thoughtful about how we spend money. Sure. Uh, but we try to make it a really fun and lovely event. So for the people who are benefiting from your service, uh, do they pay a fee for this? Not at all. Really? No. You, prov- you provide this free, but you still incur costs. That's the good reason right there for the fundraiser. That's right. We have to have the fundraiser, yeah. So w- what kinds of situations, you mentioned before, someone who maybe uh, need commuting you know, to and from a doctor's office, stuff like this. What other kinds of services uh, do people request from you, and how can they request that from you? The way they can get involved uh well, we do a little kind of mini interview over the telephone mm-hmm. with them to just find out what their needs are. Um, so they can call our office, 928-445-2480. Mm-hmm. It's our main office, and if it's one of the other branches, they can refer them. But they'll do a little brief interview over the phone, find out what their needs are and if they have family to help them or anybody in the area. A lot of our folks really don't have a good support system because they're far away from their kids or grandkids. Sure. So we we particularly. And then we'll do an in-home interview. We've got a team of intake interviewers that go to their home. It's also an an opportunity to do a little safety assessment, make sure they're in a safe environment. Um, and just determine their needs and see how we can meet them and get them enrolled in our process. So it's not like you can call on Monday and say, I need a ride on Tuesday. Yeah. You need to go through the enrollment process, and then you call any time you have a new appointment as soon yeah. as you get that appointment so we can schedule a driver to assist you and that kind of thing. You know, the safety assessment really struck home because uh, last year I got unexpectedly injured, and all of a sudden very basic everyday tasks 
were really tough. Mm -hmm. And I found out for the first time what my future might be, because we're all getting older, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And we're going to be more and more limited the older we get. And it dawned on me, we might want to take care of these things now, because certain things are not going to get better as we get older. And I'm glad now we went through that, because it taught us where we're vulnerable Mm -hmm. in our own home. So those things those things really, really paid off. Now, you're a volunteer-driven organization, right? Correct. Uh, I bet you need some more volunteers, don't you? We always are looking for good volunteers. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Kate said, we have uh, offices in the Tri-City area in Prescott, Prescott Valley, Dewey, and in Chino Valley. And we we really realize how the area is growing, and our services are going to be much more in need. Mm -hmm. But to do what we do, we need to have volunteers. Sure. Now, Barbara, you said you're new to the organization, right? Mm -hmm. Where'd you move here from? Uh, I moved here from the Panhandle of Florida. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very good. And, Kate, you've been involved for how long with People Who Care? Just about five years. Mm -hmm. I got involved shortly after I moved here. I came in from Philadelphia, so we (laughs) – but I love – I mean, I love Prescott, and I love this group of people. You don't miss miss those Philadelphia winters, do you? Not at all. (laughs) I can only imagine. So what's the best part of a job? I love the the volunteer work because you meet fascinating people. Mm -hmm. And you have a real impact on their life because yep. they really need to have people in their life. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you, if somebody asks for assistance with grocery shopping, then they get a one-on-one assignment. So you'll shop with the same person week after oh, week, sure, and really develop a lifelong relationship, basically. Mm-hmm. So it's very rewarding that way. I've met some fascinating people. I bet you. And just the the one one time driving to the doctor or the dentist. Oh, people from natives from Prescott and people from all over. Mm-hmm. So, and the the core group of volunteer. I mean, you 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 develop this whole new group of friends through the volunteer sure. tour and the board uh, activities. It's been a lot of fun. So, how can our listeners, if they care to get involved with the gala fundraiser, how can they uh, get involved with that? They need to call. Call Make a reservation. Call the office. It's coming up soon, June yeah, 16th. June 16th. And actually, they need to call immediately and get, get an mm-hmm. invitation. Um, they need to call 928-445-2480. Just say they want information about the gala, and they'll send them an invitation. Then they need to return it almost immediately yeah. <laughs> with their yeah. menu request yeah. and their check. $75 a person, um, and we'd be delighted to have a... A lot of people join us. We're going to have a fun evening. And it's, it's called Lights, Camera, Action, correct? Correct. So you can have your own little bit of Hollywood at the Prescott Resort, correct? Yes. Oh, what a beautiful view up there, too. Yes. What a nice place to have it. And we'll have all the lights on and the cameraman there and the red carpet rolled nice. out to welcome them. Very, very good. <laughs> and uh, one last question. Do you have a web page people can go to for oh, more information? Absolutely. Thank you for asking. It's peoplewhocareaz.com, mm-hmm. and there'll be information on there about this event and also about volunteering mm-hmm. and how to get assistance. Well, what a great organization. Sounds like a fun night coming up, too. June 16th, so don't delay, correct? Yeah. Correct. That's Barbara Leonard and Kate Ingalls from People Who Care about the annual Lights Camera Action Fundraiser. It's coming up the 16th. Got to act soon. Stay tuned now. We're going to have news with Link.